fallout growing over the runaway Texas Democrats' disastrous trip to Washington. So far in that group, six have tested positive for COVID-19. And yesterday we learned a White House aide and a Pelosi staff are also tested positive after coming into contact with the group. But the White House is downplaying all of it, refusing to label the trip as a super spreader event. Here's White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki applauding the rogue lawmakers again. Is there any concern that this trip that was intended to advocate for voting rights is now a super spreader event in Washington? That's not a characterization we're making from here. We certainly understand there will be breakthrough cases. Our message continues to be uh, thanks for standing up for voting rights and the rights of Americans to have their voices heard uh, at the voting booth. And thanks for spreading COVID. We appreciate that. But the media now being accused of blatant hypocrisy. Remember when former President Trump held that Rose Garden event and some of the attendees later came down with COVID? Reporters covered the story for days, doing deep dives on who was there and trying to come up with who spread the virus to whom. Watch this. And what did we see there? Some masks, many without, very tight together. Exactly what you're not supposed to do. We're starting to to be able to describe this as a potential super spreader event that occurred. Some are wondering whether this yeah. was the super spreader event. And now the Texas Dems are trying to flip the script by claiming complete victimhood. Listen to this cringeworthy comparison. We refuse to be a hostage. That's yeah. right. To remain a hostage within a state of Texas. And I know that there are search warrants out for us and I'm ready to be arrested. <laughs> what do you do to a slave if you don't do with nothing but arrest them when they flee? Oh, we fled God. Texas, and if they want to arrest me, go ahead. I'm ready to be arrested. What? Others in the group praising their so-called bravery. State Rep Michelle Beckley even seized the opportunity to launch a bid for Congress from her Washington, D.C. hotel room. She tweeted this, quote, I'm one of the brave Texas Democrats who came to D.C. to fight for voting rights in my state. Now I'm fighting to flip a seat held by an anti-democracy Republican. But at least one person is calling them out for fleeing the scene and letting down their constituents. What the Democrats have done is a disaster uh, of a trip up to Washington, D.C. that has accomplished uh, absolutely nothing. They have abandoned their job, abandoned their responsibility to engage in the debate to try to shape uh, this election integrity bill. When they get back to Texas, I will be calling another special session and put this back on the agenda, as well as so many other items that are so important to their constituents. Their constituents are getting mighty upset about the fact that their House member is not in the Senate of Texas doing the job they were elected to do. So when will the lawmakers call off the political stunt and get back to work? Let's get into it with tonight's panel, comedian and host of Fox Across America on Fox News Radio, Jimmy Fallon, Democratic pollster and Fox News contributor Jessica Tarloff, and president of Meslansky and Partners and author of Persuasion, Lee Carter. Lee, I end with you. I begin with you. What do you make of this? Again, I, th there's so much to cover, but just the I'm so brave and the sacrifice and, oh, I spread COVID to my coworkers. I think the hypocrisy of this is what's overwhelming to folks. It's like you say you're going on a, you know, on, you have a cause, you're going out there to take a stand. And all the while, you get on an airplane, you don't wear a mask, you spread COVID. And honestly, I don't understand what the point of all this is. And beyond that, I think this is what the American people are tired of. They're tired of seeing politicians say one thing and behave another way. And this goes both ways. It happened for four years before this, and it's happening now. You can't have it both ways. I think the hypocrisy is what's killing trust in the institutions. It's what's killing trust in our parties. And enough already. If you're going to, if you're going to be I, I mean, I just, I don't understand how you can take a stand as they are on masks, on vaccinations, on saying that we need to behave a certain way, and then go on in the plane, spread COVID, and do this. It's just... So, uh, I, I don't know where... Jessica, um, the, so they're not going to release any more daily coronavirus numbers after, because the numbers <laughs> keep growing. It's not funny. No, I never want anyone to get sick, but I guess that just burying, burying the information is one way they can deal with it. 
Well, I think what they're going to do is, if it's someone high level, someone that's been exposed to the president or the vice president and the first lady or and the second gentleman, then we will get that information, a top aide to Pelosi, for instance, who just tested positive. Um, but it, what's been really interesting to me, and Jimmy and I were talking about this earlier on his radio show, is the number of breakthrough cases right. that we are seeing. And Dr. Nicole Sapphire and Dr. Marty McCary, um, who both appear on our network, obviously, all the time, and Nicole is a contributor, have been talking about the fact that we need to stop testing people who are vaccinated because the cases that they're getting more often than not are asymptomatic, like why all these people are continuing to go to work because they're asymptomatic, or very mild cases versus the ones that are landing you in the ICU, and that's 99.7% are unvaccinated people. That is the pandemic we need to focus on because COVID in all of its variants, Delta or whatever is to come after this is going to be with us for an incredibly long time, unfortunately. We gotta learn to live with it. And that's really it. where I'm wondering about like what's going on here. The same thing applies to the Texas Democrats to have six of 12, right? Like you have right. 50% like, maybe, got a breakthrough case. Well, maybe somebody maybe sort of wasn't vaccinated. I mean, a lot. some people are asking that and I'm this I, is sure speculation I'm not saying I'm not casting aspersions I but would I would bet my bottom dollar and I only have one dollar that all of those Texas Dems are vaccinated okay. fully and right, certainly so would you, not have gotten on the plane I know they had Miller Lite and blah 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 yeah. but the whole I don't think they would have played games with that especially with the messaging right, from but, the Dems around the vaccine so Jimmy, the last few months so mm -hmm. Jimmy why not use this moment, though, to send the message of, like, we all got COVID and we have no symptoms and just you could flip the script literally yeah. rather than it making, it making it about your bravery and your sacrifice. Say, this is a non-event. We're going about, we're, you, make it a teachable moment, yeah. as the smart people say. It, it would make sense because what happened? They went with a case of Miller Lite and they came back with a case of COVID. <laughs> it's not really a good look. Um, but what we really need is we need a vaccination against disingenuous race baiting. Because that's the bigger story to me here, is that we're living in the death of shame. We just played a woman who is an elected official in our government identifying herself as a slave. That's right. We're so oppressive in this country. We're now electing the slaves and letting them run our state legislatures. This is embarrassing. And Kamala Harris, man, it's so embarrassing. She compared these people to Frederick Douglass, Dagan McDowell. Frederick Douglass, who stood up against slavery when you could get killed for doing it. The only time they stood up was to go potty on the plane. It's so embarrassing to me. The only thing they have in common with Frederick Douglass is apparently he didn't wear a mask when he traveled either. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Meantime, COVID cases also surging at the border. Not funny. Cases among migrants have spiked more than 900% over the past 14 months in the Rio Grande Valley sector alone, already totaling 135 cases in just the first two weeks of this month. The Biden administration has been struggling to get a grip on the crisis at the border, and sources say they are now considering lifting Title 42. That's the policy that has blocked more than 750,000 migrants from crossing since October because of COVID. So why are lawmakers debating whether to end this public health order that protects Americans when this is a greater public health threat at the border? Jimmy, take it away. Well, as long as none of these migrants post any memes on Facebook, uh, I think we'll be safe. Uh, this is absurd. This should have been the priority all along. And the fact that there is a double standard is why we don't really have a standard that anybody's buying into on the coronavirus. You can't buy public health initiatives from an administration that's not throwing a complete game. The border, if you're letting it go unchecked, if you're letting people get into this country untested, you are not throwing a complete game. You know the old adage in sports, defense wins championships. We're not playing enough defense at the border. And it's why a lot of people don't take them at their word that they're serious about the virus. And the whole idea going after Facebook drives me crazy because, again, this is the highest vote-getting ticket in the history of our country if we are to believe the results. And they want us to believe that Facebook uh, dissuaded more people from getting the vaccine than they did when they trashed the vaccine for, during the whole election cycle. And that's the part I don't buy. Yeah, and there, were, there was a report that it was almost a third of illegal migrants in one area were refusing the vaccine. So I guess that they were busy on their smartphones, <laughs> connecting with their relatives and friends on Facebook, or, their, or the NFL teams. 
There were, yeah. it, you know, as of last week, a couple yeah. who hadn't even reached a 50% mark. Jessica, what do you make of the, the Title 42? Maybe they don't lift uh, Title 42 with right. the spike in cases at this point. Yeah, that, I'm hearing that from uh, government officials that they are not planning on lifting Title 42. Obviously, that could change dramatically, but I think that with the renewed interest um, from the Democratic side of things, especially border state Democrats, someone like uh, Representative Quaylar, for instance, who called out the Biden administration for going for a photo op versus doing substantive work at the border when Kamala Harris came down there, that they're not in any position to let in three quarters of a million extra migrants on top of this who might be bringing a life-threatening disease with them. The COVID hesitancy is such a hot topic now, and you bring up the NFL teams. I think it was the Washington football team is what I'm supposed to call them um, and the Colts and too. was it the Colts yeah, was, it was the, the other Colts. one but but we also had a huge outbreak in Major League Baseball and found out that like half the Yankees are unvaccinated well, and we're seeing much lower numbers versus the NBA for instance and it really behooves the league if they want to keep playing obviously they want to keep making money but they want to keep their players safe to do a better job in terms of messaging around this and that's where it gets complicated with these breakthrough cases reinstituting mask mandates I think people are just looking around saying like I don't know what to do at this point I'm vaxxed I ain't um, wearing a mask I'll do, do, it do it if a private shot, business but, I'll do it if a private business says lady right? Got to wear a mask, but I'm vaxxed. I had COVID. I got antibodies. I'm not putting that mask on. It causes blepharitis, and I got styes all on my eyes. I digress. Jimmy, before I go to Lee, you were. I heard you say something about um, football. What were you saying? No, it was Jessica was talking about the Yankees getting COVID. I just wanted to point out that if history is any indicator, my Yankees probably use the needles for other reasons, and that's why they're a little lax on the vaccination. <laughs> Taking I, those A Rod Flintstone vitamins. I st stand with you on that. Yeah, I'll take. <laughs> uh, I will take eight Barney Rubbles in a syringe. Uh, Lee Carter, final <laughs> word to you. <laughs> I think the problem that's happening at the border is the the symbol here of all of the immigrants coming in and spreading COVID is actually drawing more attention to the border, which is an issue for the Biden administration right now. He's got a 41 percent approval rating on immigration right now. That's lower than Donald Trump's ever was. And so I think this just is another spotlight on the on the problems at the border. And, and it's just one more reason that the administration is really going to have to step up and address it. Well, illegal immigrants are pouring over the southern border, but uh, they decided, the Biden administration, to uh, extend the um, time that Canadians can not still not come into the United States. There, you, in Canada, the, our northern border and the actual southern border is closed to legal people coming across until August 21st. Canada said vaccinated Americans can now come on up August 9th. But we can't have Canadians here, which is a damn shame.